I say yes to the goodness. I say yes to love. I say yes. Areas of difficulty for students with autism. Those are social relationships, communication, and this will range from having absolutely no language, mutism, to having limited language. And you will notice that a lot of your students with autism are going to be getting speech and language services, usually in the area of pragmatics. And also there's restricted, repetitive stereotype, stereotype patterns of behavior, interests, and activities. So if you understand the characteristics of students with autism, you can better understand how to accommodate, how to modify for them, and you just have a better perspective about how to work with them. You're going to have a very comprehensive list of accommodations and modifications for you for every area in your classroom. So you have this as a resource. I wanted to point out specifically some of the effects of the disability of autism and some specific accommodations that you can do for these students. The best accommodation for students with autism are thinking maps. These students, their strength is in visual processing. So if we can use thinking maps, especially for brainstorming ideas for writing, for sequencing <coughs> anything, sequencing steps in a procedure for a math problem, sequencing the steps to writing an essay, you need to do that. It is a visual support, okay? It's like visual instructions. <coughs> They're going to provide organization and clarity. Visual schedules. It could be as simple as writing down what their assignments are individually on a whiteboard and have them check it off. No, your kids are not going to need pictures. These are high-functioning kids we serve, okay? They're not going to need that. But they do need the words, and they do need a visual representation of what they need to do if they're not doing what you need them to do. If you're asking your students to do independent work, well, a student with autism might need an independent workstation. They may need for you to set up an area where they can go, and it's visually labeled what they need to do first. They have a list. One, two, three, four. Okay, prompting. A lot of us do prompting. We don't even realize how much we do it. We do it all the time. We do verbal prompts. So if, you know, this is kind of an elementary setting, but a verbal prompt would be, Kate, write your name. Well, we still do that. <laughs> write your name. I say, stop, stop. Name on the top. They say, wait, wait. Don't forget the date. That's okay. <laughs> um, so it could be. So verbal would be, what? I keep it cute. I keep it fun. If it's a problem, right? Solve the problem. Solve the problem. They still don't know how to do it? Okay, let me model how to do this for you. Let me solve it for you. Okay, and, and you don't want to do all the steps, and that's where we'll talk about task analysis. Task analysis is basically when you take a skill and you break it into smaller, more manageable steps. And you, want to, you want to represent this as a flow map, right? If you can provide individualized reinforcers, we, you know, I'd love to work away, away from food and candy, which I probably use a little too much, sorry. Um, but they really respond to that. We can work towards the secondary reinforcers. I know a lot of you use like jump passes, homework passes, access to activities, give them time on the computer. Like sometimes these kids legitimately need a break. Like you need to feel comfortable giving them a five minute break. And if you don't feel comfortable, you will afterwards and to, when, you, when you see what it does to them. You all have your strategy. You all have your case study. So I'm going to give you five minutes to talk about what you're going to plan. You're all going to create a thinking map. Okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, and then go over here. Because we're going to. Oh, like a bell. Okay. Or chimes, whatever. And music. Okay, we can do both. Music. Okay, and then repetition. Yes. Like repeat it. Yeah, you're repeating. Repeat it. Repeating. Um, and you're um, asking. Yeah. Ask questions. Yeah. And have them explain it back. Uh, yeah. You can give them alternatives. You can give them alternatives because I don't want walk the mile in favor. I should give them one else. Okay, walk the basketball court.
them to remember what to do when they come in. Uh, number one is take out pencil and agenda. Number two, copy homework for the week. Number three, listen to directions for warm-up from teacher. And number four, complete warm-up in notebook. And then the clock, we have the little paper clocks. What I've done in the past for uh, elementary, you know those little paper clocks that you use to learn the, the clock? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I would put it on a high anxiety student's desk, and I would put where, like, the um, the fire drill, like if it's mm -hmm. going to be at 1215, I'll put it to 1215, and then also write it on the board so they also know. Of course, we're talking about the board agenda so they can see it visually. Uh, the timer app, like what we're doing here. That concludes your... Uh, crash course in autism. I, I, I hope that that was helpful for you. I'm wishing on a star to follow where you are. I'm wishing on